O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? We moved to York in June 2004. And today is the first time that I've spoken in chapel when my wife hasn't been sitting in the front row, whether it's here in the church building in three months. On Saturday during the volleyball game, we received a phone call that we'd been expecting and dreading for about a month now. In just shy of two hours, my wife will be attending her grandmother's funeral. Funerals are peculiar things. Some are sad. Some are happy. Some are called memorial services. Some are called celebrations of life. Some leave you with feelings of hopelessness and despair. Some leave you feeling joy and excitement for life. There's no doubt that today in Alabama there are going to be tears of sadness as four boys have lost their mother. Others have lost a grandmother, a great-grandmother, an aunt, a cousin, a friend. There will be tears of joy and comfort as someone is no longer suffering from the ailments and afflictions and illnesses of this world but has gone on to her eternal reward. There will be laughter. There will be stories. There will be reminiscing. And I, for one, am going to be disappointed if, when I talk to my wife later today if I discover there wasn't a discussion of the time the grandchildren found out that their grandmother's name, given name, was not Ann, but was Baby. 1929 or whenever she was born, a long time ago. <laughs> her parents named her Baby Ann because they had expected, anticipated that she was going to be their last child. She would be the baby of the family, so it makes sense, Baby Ann. That didn't turn out quite that way. I don't know how many children followed her, but there were others. <laughs> Until Jesus comes back, all of us are going to die. Death is a natural part of life. But for those of us in Christ Jesus, there's life after death. It's guaranteed in the scriptures. And I have no doubt in my mind that Anne Spike is going to be in heaven. She didn't just talk to Jesus, she walked Jesus. Most of you are wondering why I'm talking about death this morning in general terms. Or I'm talking about the death of a particular individual that as far as I know only two of us in this room know. There's two reasons. First, God made heaven and He wants you in it. God made heaven and He wants you in it. The scripture tells us about God's love, His mercy, His grace, His judgment, His plan for our life. How to obtain salvation that Jesus came and took on our sins and died on the cross for us and was raised on the third day that we might have this hope of eternal life. It's a free gift. It's not forced upon any of us. It's for us to accept. I want you to know the joy that I found last night when I opened up Instagram and I saw that two of our young ladies had put on Christ in baptism. Amen. They accepted that gift. The second reason is I have this immense and potentially irrational fear that somebody is going to leave your college and say, nobody ever offered to talk to me about Jesus. Well, here's your offer. If you need to talk about Jesus, if you need to talk about spiritual matters, if you need somebody to pray with you, to somebody to pray for you, come see me. I'm in Middlebrook 303. Tweet me, YCCJ. Email me, be on loan at Lord. Call me, 402-363-5637. You come see me if you need to talk about Jesus, if you need to talk about your eternal salvation, if you're struggling, it doesn't matter where you are in this faith journey, I am willing to help you. The vast majority of the times, I will set aside whatever I am doing to talk Jesus with you. You want to come just chat and talk about your class and I may send you away and make you make an appointment. If you want to talk about Jesus, I'm going to make the time for you. 
I don't know all the answers, but I will help you find the answers. If you come to me with some deep theological question, odds are I'm not going to know the answer, but we're all blessed because the Bible department is just down the hall from my office and we'll walk down there and interrupt them. <laughs> you may talk about things to where I can tell you what Scripture says, but I've never personally experienced that. I'll find somebody to ask. There have been numerous times that somebody sat in my office and I've given them what the Bible says about their situation and I stopped and said, said you know what? A few years ago, my wife had that same struggle. Let me call her. We're going to walk over and see her. It may not be her. It may be somebody else. I'm not the only one that is willing to do that for you. I'm just the fool that will stand up in front of 450 people and tell you all to come see me. Because this is important stuff. This matters to me. My bosses, Dr. Mountjoy and Dr. Eggman, know that I will quit working on what I'm working on if somebody needs to talk about Jesus. The majority, if not all, of your faculty and staff are willing to do the same. There's a large number of students here that would do the same for you. There is no excuse. Come see me. Come find one of them. I leave you with these words from 1 Corinthians. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord.